Grab your Bible, stand on your feet with me. Let me say a word of prayer over you as we get prepared to receive the word of God on today, as we get prepared to receive the, receive the word of God here today. Father, in Jesus' name, I thank you for every individual that can hear my voice right now. Those, oh God, who are preparing to hear the word of God, I pray now that your presence, your power, God, will be upon us now. Speak a word to us in time, in time, a word on time, that these who have ears to hear may hear what the Spirit says unto the church. God, condition our hearts and minds not to only be hearers but doers. Breathe upon us now, not for show, form, or fashion, not for any outside show to the world, but that your people may be edified and encouraged through your word. We ask this blessing over them now in Jesus' name. Amen. I'm calling your attention today, whether you have your iPhone, your Android, or whether you have your iPad, whatever uh, device you may be using, or your Bible, the Gospel according to St. Matthew chapter 15. The Gospel according to St. Matthew chapter 15. The Gospel according to St. Matthew chapter 15. And I want to key in on verse number 22. I want to key in on verse number 22. Chapter 15, and we're keying in on verse 22. Once you have it, say amen. See, here's some pages that are still turning as you're turning. I want to look at this passage today, and I want to, by the help of the Lord, I want to key in on these verses. Matthew Gospel, chapter 15, verse number 22, and the word of God for the people of God. I'm reading from the King James Version of the Bible. And behold, a woman of Canaan came out of the same coast and cried unto him, saying, have mercy on me, O Lord, thou son of David. My daughter is grievously vexed with a devil. And he answered her not a word. And his disciples came and besought him, saying, Send her away, for she crieth after us. But he answered and said, I am not sent but unto the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Then came she and worshiped him, saying, Lord, help me. But he answered and said, it is not meet to take the children's bread and cast it to dogs. And she said, truth, Lord, yet the dogs eat the crumbs which fall from their master's table. And Jesus said, and answered unto her, and said unto her, O woman, great is thy faith. Be it unto thee, even as thou wilt. And her daughter was made whole from that very hour. Amen. As you take your seats with your prayers and God's help, I want to talk for just a moment about the undeniable mother. The undeniable mother. Amen. Would you look at someone on your row, someone around you, and look at them straight in the eye and say, the, under, the, the undeniable mother. <laughs> One more time, let's do it good. The undeniable mother. Amen. 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 For these uh, few moments that I have with you, brothers and sisters, I want to talk about that because that's exactly what we find in this passage. To introduce this passage, brothers and sisters, we will discover it is in Matthew's Gospel, chapter 15. And in chapter 15 of Matthew's Gospel, the Bible says in verse number 21 that Jesus is actually hanging out uh, on the coast of Tyre and Sidon. This is kind of like off the course a little bit because he has kind of entered, entered into um, the country area or the area of Canaanites and these uh, people of Syrian, these Syrian 
people live in this region. And he's kind of veered off a little bit being on the coast of Tyre and Sidon. And somehow or another, at the same time that he's in that region, here comes a woman. This woman, of course, is known as a woman from Phoenicia, who is a Syrian, so they call her most times the Syrophoenician woman. This woman comes out of this coast, and she comes, and she approaches Jesus crying. Uh, the word crying here connotes the fact that, that uh, she's talking loud, but not only is she talking loud in verse number 22, it also connotes the fact of that her loud talking of exclamation to Jesus is also accompanied by tears running down her face. That there's something seriously wrong and something seriously troubling this woman. And when we actually find out what's troubling her, we discover that she is a mother. And she is crying because something is seriously wrong at her house. It's important, brothers and sisters, that we don't look over this because she's come from out of her private place to a public place in order to find Jesus because her private place has been disturbed. I would suggest, brothers and sisters, to you that if your private place, which is your home, has been disturbed in any way, uh, you ought to go where you've got to go in order to get some help in order that your private place may retain its peace. There's nothing like a peaceful house. Nothing like when you didn't work all day long and you've gone through the hustle and bustle of life up and down the highways of life and then all of a sudden you gotta go home to a hellish house. Can't get no rest there. Amen. You take the long route home. Amen. Because I don't want to go home. But, but it is nothing like having peace in the home. And when peace has been disturbed, you should not resort to living in chaos. Living in a place that there is no rest, no refuge, and that there is no revival when you get to your home. Brothers and sisters, she comes crying because there's something going on at her house. And I would suggest, brothers and sisters, when you discover what's really going on and look very closely at what's happening, uh, uh, number one, in the introduction of this passage, I would suggest, write this down, that the reason why she's crying out to Jesus is because uh, this verse, verse 22, suggests, number one, that there is a problem with her child. There is a problem with her child. Now, brothers and sisters, um, 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 uh, I, I, I took a look at this, and the problem with her child, when you look at verse number 22, listen to this. The problem with her child um, is interesting because she said about her child, verse number 22, that she is grievously vexed with a devil. She's grievously vexed with a devil. She's grievously vexed with a devil. Let's, let's break that down for a minute. She's grieving and she's angry. I thought I'd give you the simple terms. My daughter is grieving and she's angry. That whatever is ailing her has caused grief grievously and she's vexed you know what a person that's vexed look like it's an angry person it's a it's a person that's hot on fire they are mad well you look very closely at it now 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 uh, you will from time to time get mad and you from time to time will grieve but when the devil then got tangled up in it can't get no help in here on that one. See, you know, you know I, I, can, I, I can have, see, because your, your, your anger is only for a moment if you get angry about something. You know what I'm saying? Uh, uh, being grieved over something or uh, some things that's going on in the house uh, uh, is, 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 is all right uh, because, you know, sometimes you can sleep it off. You know, sometimes you can come back into your senses. Sometimes, you know, at the cool of the day, you can actually, 
as the old folks say, the cool of the day. You can actually resolve it very well, you know. But, 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 but die when the devil then got in it. And he didn't start stirring in it. Uh, and now it has become toxic. That, that what was a little mohill has turned into a mountain. And the devil has now took what was miniature and now maximized it. You know, that's why you ought to handle stuff in your house and handle stuff with your children and handle it quick, fast, and in a hurry before the devil get in there. I'm trying to work hard early. I say before the devil get in there and the devil start messing and the devil start maximizing what was once a little minor situation. The longer you let stuff fester, amen, the longer you let stuff just linger, the longer you wait to resolve the issue inside of your house, especially when it comes down to mother and father and father and sons. Amen. You sometimes we pray and we talk about how mothers are against daughters and daughters are against mothers and fathers are against sons. Sons are against uh, the whole house is in turmoil. But but let me you you got to learn how not to let the devil be able to come in and get a stronghold, a foothold, and it's stretching out when it should have been over last night. When we should have had this thing nipped after the last family reunion we had. When we should have had this thing nipped last year. The day after it happened, you and the daughter, you and the son should have came back together and got that thing right. Because the longer you let it linger, the devil start getting in there saying little stuff. He'll send crazy people your child's way. Oh, my God. He, he will start telling them stuff and putting little demonic angels and demons on their shoulder to talk into their ear. And by the time y'all do try to solve something, you say, well, where you get that from? Well, I thought this. Well, well, you, well that, that was never the case. It's because the devil didn't got into it. But this woman, her situation didn't got so bad until it has gotten out of control. I want to suggest to you today a problem with a child. I would suggest when you look into it, it was relational. Had something to do very well with their relationship. It was relational. It was relational. It was relational. You, 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 can't, you can't push that out. The way. It, it had something to do with relational. Because, because the way she came to Jesus in verse number 22, here we go, she came not angry, but she came crying. That, 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 that very well, isogetically, which means I need to paint a picture and, and I need, and then, 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 then applied hermeneutics, uh, which is applied interpretation of the text, uh, will give you enough room to say that, that she say, well, Jesus passing through my coast. I better go see Jesus because this demon then got larger than a whooping. Come on, it ain't got beyond time out. I can't get no help in this church here. Yeah. It, 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 this demon then got beyond me taking her barber doll, uh, her barber doll house and her cooking station with the Play-Doh and the stuff and the stuff and the stuff. And <laughs> me cutting her curfew. Okay, let me come on back up to teenage, all right? I'll get away from kiddie stuff. But, but, but I would suggest it was relational. I would suggest that it became confrontational. I would suggest it had become emotional, but then it was also psychological because the devil plays on all of these things. She's, she's coming to Jesus because of the problem with her child. And so here's what she does. Uh, number two, I'm moving on. Uh, uh, not only is there in this text a problem with her child, there is, number two, according to this passage, there is her plea in the crisis. Here it is, verse number 22. Lord, have mercy. 
on me. Now, you can't go beyond this because look at what she's asking for. She don't need grace because you need grace when you're guilty. You need grace because you need to cover the guilt of sin. That's not the case. She says, Lord, have mercy. Watch this. Not on my daughter. On me. I, I need the help. Now, I know my daughter got her own thing, but, but, but she done woke me out. I ain't getting no sleep. I, 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 mean, I mean, she is red, hot, fire chili peppers right now. And, and, and I, I, I need you to have mercy. Now, watch this. Have mercy on me. The reason why you need get grace is because of guilt, but you need mercy because of misery. That her house has become miserable. Now, here's two ways for a parent. Lord, have mercy on me because I am miserable in this. This girl and wore me down. And then have mercy on me because of what I might do to her if I keep having to live with this mess. And I would, I would suggest if you're at the wit's end, mama, it's Mother's Day. I, I suggest if you about to blow your lid, you need to stop, find Jesus, and ask the Lord for some mercy. I don't know who I'm coming here to talk to today, but before you pull off your pumps and pull your earrings out your ear, and before you take off your wig, go down on your knees and ask the Lord, have mercy on me, Lord. I, I, I'm trying not to, but y'all about to make me lose my mind up in here, up in Y'all about to make me go all out. Up in here. <laughs> up in here and let me ask y'all a crazy question have you ever had to ask God for some mercy she pleads her plea was her prayer Lord mercy please Lord mercy I, I know you can fix it for me I know you can do it for me Lord I'm asking you for some mercy now I only have I only have four of these I'm, I'm, I'm over with, with two of them number one look at her problem with her child look at her plea for the crisis but then when she asked for mercy he ain't said nothing according to verse number 23 he does not answer her a word. The disciples came begging him, saying, get rid of her. Send her away. All this noise she making, and she, she crying after us. Get, why don't you just move, make her move on, please? And, and, and him not answering her a word. L listen, brothers and sisters, because most times, once you won't answer me, I go on about my business. But what happens when you can't go back to the house like that? What happens when you can't return home in that situation? What, 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 what happened? What do you do when, when, when you can't afford to go back into that situation the same way you came out of it? See, brothers and sisters, and that's what I want you to see today here, the undeniable mother. We've been to deal with, for the next seven minutes, a mama who would not be denied. Whether she wouldn't be denied because she knew herself, but more so, I believe she wouldn't be denied because she loved her child. Because it's nothing for a mother to put her child's needs, come on now, over her own personal needs. 
it, it's, it's almost a common, a common gesture of a mother to deny what she wants, what she needs for the sake of her child who is, who is in need. In a mama will not pay her bills to pay a daughter's bill or a son's bill. She, 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 she will go without eating toast and eating leftovers for lunch so that her children can eat and have. And mama, you going to eat something? Mama, you going to have? No, I'm fine. No, she ain't fine. But she'll sacrifice on that level for her child. And this woman got to make a decision because Jesus has not answered her a word. He has not said nothing to her. And I want to say today that this act, by Jesus is a form of testing her. It is Jesus that he, it, because what, what I want you to see is, is number three, I want you to see her persistence with Christ. Her persistence with Christ. Verse number 23 through verse number 27. Her persistence that she was first ignored. Ignored. Here's what it says in verse 23, and he answered her not a word. He said nothing to her. He didn't respond. And my question is to you, how do you handle when Jesus doesn't respond? How have you handled it in the past? Because this woman now is confronted with a silent Jesus. Not only does he ignore her, but he now informs her. Look at, what, look at the information he gives her. He, he informs her uh, uh, because what happens is he says unto her, it is not meat, verse 26, for me to take the children's bread and cast it to the dogs. Look at the information. He ignores her. He gives her this information. Uh, 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 then, brothers and sisters, in English standard vernacular, he also insults her. He calls her a dog. Now, in America, it's an insult. Oh, yeah? Y'all don't think so? See, in America, you call me a dog? First of all, you ignoring me. And then second of all, when you do say something, I overhear you talking to your disciples. Because uh, according to the text, he was not directly at this moment talking to her. He was talking, watch this, to his disciples. Because he was trying to prove a point and give them a point he was trying to tell them what 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 was in what was important for them to know as far watch this as his priority that he said now now understand disciples understand that that I did not come I did not I was not sent for the lost sheep of the house of Israel I was not sent for that purpose he said, I was not sent for the lost sheep of Israel. He said, I, 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 was, I, was, I was sent for, uh, but unto, excuse me, the lost sheep of Israel. That's who I was sent for them. That's my priority. Watch this. But she didn't overheard them. And when she overhears, she hear the word dog, dog, dog. Let me get out of here. Let me get up. Let me, let, me, let, me, let me quit. Let me quit. Because when she says, he says the word dog, could you have stood there? Could you have put up But what he's saying? See, watch this, watch this, watch this. Be because he answered and said, it is not proper to take what was for the children of Israel and then give it to a second-hand citizen. 
what was meant for them, and I take it and give it to you. Now, this ain't the first time dogs was used. Philippians 3 and 2, uh, uh, the apostle Paul says, beware of dogs. Because in their language, uh, that was a common uh, turn for those type of people. But ladies and gentlemen, brothers and sisters, let me just put it out like this. I'm glad it was her and not him. Let me say that again. I'm glad it was the woman and not a man. I'm glad... It was a mama and not a father. See, 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 because I want to just say this, and I'm going, I'm going to my seat, I'm going, I'm going to quit. Let me just say this, men are wired much differently. I can't get no help there. And now you can have a man sitting there beside you right now, and he's like, no, I'm, no, I'm good. No, bro, you know how we are. We are wired totally different. Yeah, you know, the first time a joker going to ignore me in my face, Come on, do you, I mean, you can see that. I, I mean, come, come, you know, think about it. The first time, not only a joker ignores you, but then he insults you. See, uh, that's why I'm glad it was the girl's mama and not her daddy. See, because what mama decided, mama decided to stay right there and put up with whatever he's saying. Because he got the blessing that I need. And I ain't going nowhere. I, I, you know, I, I'm going to say, he can say whatever he want to say. He can, he, he can do whatever he want to do. But, but, but I ain't going to leave Jesus until he give me what I want. Now, if that had been my daddy, I don't know about your daddy. But if that had been my daddy, my daddy, the moment you would have ignored him, and the moment you, see, you still would have had the demon in you if, 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 if it was dependent upon getting it cast out because of this. My, dad, my daddy, hey amen, how many of y'all had daddies like that? You ain't been to talk to them any kind of way. I put on my britches the same way you put on your britches, and I put on my shoes the same way you put on your shoes. Wish I had a prayer in church. Come on. And sometimes you got to thank God it was your mama and not your daddy. Huh? Huh? Because the moment... You would have ignored a father. He would have started cussing. Probably got into a fight. The moment you would have said, dog, come on. He would have became James Evans from good times. He would have, been, he would have become George Jefferson from the Jeffersons. He would have become Denzel Washington in John Q. I wish I had a prayer in church. He would have become Craig's daddy in Friday. Huh? You ain't finna call me. Come on. But thank God when you got a mother that'll do whatever she got to do in order to get what she got to get for her child. Now you ought to sit there right now and thank God for your mama. Thank God that your mama hung in there. Thank God that your mama didn't give up. Thank God that your mama didn't throw in the towel. Thank God your mama did not cast you away. Oh, oh, I'm out of here. I'm out of here. I'm out of here. What she did, what she did, in spite of being insulted, in spite of being ignored, I got to go. What she did, she found the prescription for the cure. She found, here we go, the prescription for the cure. What did she find, Brown? I'm glad y'all asked me. She found herself to change her posture. Verse 25 say, when he ignored her, the first thing she did in verse number 25, she got down on her knees. And she worshiped. <laughs> and the bad part about this, it, it seems like probably about, about 25 of y'all don't understand the strength of what I just said. When he ignored her, watch this, when he ignored her standing up, she changed her posture from an upright to a prostrate. I can't get no help in here. Because what she understood 
is one thing Jesus can't ignore is worship. And if you ever want to get his attention, I dare you to change your posture. If you're not getting the answer from him that you're looking to get from him, I'm going to encourage you tonight or today to change your posture. Because what you can't get standing up, you can get bowing down. I can't get no help in this church. Amen. And, and this ain't for everybody, but this is for a handful of y'all. And true worshipers know how to get to the heart of God. I say true worshipers. Where's my true worshipers at? I didn't say true praisers. Huh? I didn't say true praisers. This woman is a true worshiper. Because all of my true praisers, I thank God for y'all who are true praisers. Because you praise God for what the Lord has done. Do I have a witness? I say you praise God for what he has done. But you worship him for who he is. And folk that don't worship are folk that don't know who he is. And God cannot ignore when you worship him. She changed her posture, but not only did she change her posture, when he started talking about dogs, she said, all right, fine, Lord, you're right. Because she now not only changed her posture, she confirmed her personality. She said, dog, okay, but let's get something straight. I'm a dog, but let's get it right and don't get it twisted. The kind of dog I am. I'm not the kind of dog that you're considering talking about that runs throughout Syria and runs throughout this region and they can't be tamed. They are mad wolves. They are run to and fro here and there. They are mad wolves. They, they, they are run and tear up stuff. They, they are run and they will attack people. I can't get nobody to hear me here. I say they will run and tear up cities. She say wild dogs that you can't even put chains on them. She say, yeah, I'm a dog, but let's identify the kind of dog I am. I'm not a wild, untamable dog. I'm a puppy. Because the proper translation of the word dog that is used there is little dog. She said, I'm the kind of dog that's dependent on my master. That if my master don't feed me, I won't get fed. If my master don't train me as a puppy, I won't get trained. Y'all don't hear me here today. I, I, I say, and you need to identify who you are, the kind of dog. She said, I, I'll tell you the kind of dog I am. I'm the kind of dog. I am the kind of person. I am the one that you can train. I am the one that you can, can, can show the way. I got to go. I got to go. I got to go. But, but ask your neighbor, what kind of dog are you? Come on, I say look at them and ask them, what kind identify yourself? Are you one that roam the streets, turn over the trash, attack people? Amen, you're, you're one that, that jump fences and, and tear up stuff. No, tell your neighbor, that's not me, that's not me. Tell them that's not me, but I am, I am, I am the kind that this woman was talking about. And she say, I'm a puppy, I'm a little dog. I am the one that will eat the crumbs that fall from the master's table. You know what she's saying? You know what she's saying? I gotta go. She's saying, I don't need the whole loaf. As a puppy, my stomach ain't even that big. She say, I'll take the crumbs. I'll hang around your feet and when a crumb from the bread falls on the floor, that'll be enough for me. Because she say, not only will I change my posture, 
She said, yeah, I'll confirm my personality. And she said, I'll be grateful for my portion. And I'm here today to tell you, she celebrated just the crumbs. There's some, there's some mother, there's some mother in here. You didn't have the whole loaf. You, you didn't live with the whole loaf. You didn't have a whole loaf. Let me find my mothers now. But you had to raise your children off the crumb. Uh, 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 you, you couldn't send them to Yale. Couldn't, couldn't get your child to Princeton. Couldn't get them to Georgetown without a scholarship. But, but, but thank God for the crumbs. I can get you up to Livingstone. I, I can get you to Johnson C. Smith. I can get you to Central Piedmont. I, I can get you to a and I can get you to Bethune Cook. I can get you to fam you. Oh, y'all ain't saying nothing. You sitting there acting as if you lived off the loaf. But I believe I got some witnesses here of some mothers that just thank God for the crumb. Because it's the crumb that fell from the master's table. I'm going. I'll see y'all later. Happy Mother's Day. But can I tell you, thank God for the undeniable mother. Thank God. She wouldn't give up. Thank God. She wouldn't give in. Thank God. She stuck with it. Thank God. That she would not give it up. She stuck with it. Three months ago. So, I was going through. Going through. I was almost crazy in my mind because there was so much going on. So, so, I told lady, I said, lady, I need to talk to my mama. But it was so heavy, so I just, I said, huh. I said, lady was praying, but I, I said, lady, it's just so much. Finally, I get on the phone, and I couldn't get a whole sentence out before I was crying. I was on the phone. I said, I said mama, 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 mama. I, and I was trying to explain as a father, as a parent. I said, mama, mama, mama. And she said, well, baby, 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 just say it. I got my checkbook out. I got my checkbook. I say, I don't need your money. I say, I'm not, mom, I'm not calling. I don't want your money. You, don't send me no money. She said, well, baby, what, 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 just tell me what you need me to do. I said, Mom, I need you. Number one, I need you to pray for me. All right, so, 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 let me tell you what happened. So, let me tell you what happened. So, 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 she said, oh, oh, okay, baby. And, I, and, I, and before I hung up the phone, I said, Mom, I really, I really need you. I need you, okay? okay. Now, I ain't never done this before. I ain't, because I, I, I'm just a brown son, and I'm, I'm strong. You know, I'm, I'm macho. You know, I don't even let my family see me. That broke. I was on the side of 85 in my car, broke down, crying like a baby, you know. And, 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 and Ma hung up. I didn't hear from my mama for another 10 days. But my sister called me, and she said, Fenton, which is my middle name, you better tell me what's going on. She said, is there anything I can do? I said, w Wanda, what you talking about? What's up? What do you, you say? She said, no, you, I mean, you need to tell me is there anything I can do. I said, do about what? She said, mama won't eat. Mama won't come out the house. She said, she said, she said, she said only thing she's saying is fit, lawn, and chat. Fit, lawn, chat. I said, I say, Wanda, okay, okay, uh, uh, hang up the phone. Let me call mama. She said, somebody need to do something or tell me something. So, so finally, I call mom, and mama said, baby, all I need to know is 
How are things? I tried to give you my money. You didn't call me for money because you said you didn't need my money. She said, so baby, all I did is I locked myself in my room. And I told God, you can't deny my baby. I'm going to stay right here until my child gets the breakthrough that he needs. I, I said, Mom, she said, son, I, I, she said, she said, how is his check? I said, I said, Mama, everything I told you about seven days ago, ten days ago, I, I say, every, everything is up, Mom. Everything is doing well. Everything, she said, well, baby, that's all I needed to hear. She said, because I went to God. I, she said, she say, Fenton, I ain't never done it before in my life. She said, but when I heard the agony in your voice, she said, Fenton, when I heard the pain that you was up against, she said, all I really knew is that's my baby and that's my child. And she said, so when I went to the Lord, she said, baby, you know I got bad knees. She said, but uh, I, I, I fell down on my knees. She said, I knew the Lord was going to have to help me get off my knees. But she said, I had to go to God on my knees. And uh, she said, I just cried your name all night long. She said, so that's why Joanna think I'm crazy because my eyes are red. Because for seven days now, I hadn't been getting no sleep. She said, because I, I refuse to let God go until uh, he answered my prayers. And uh, thank God that uh, we got women in the church that know how to do like this woman did. The Bible say when she came to Jesus that uh, she was crying and wailing. Have I got a witness in here? And sometimes women, uh, if you just learn how to wail and cry, if you just learn how to moan and groan, Y'all ain't saying nothing. Uh, it'll get God's attention and uh, he will hear your faintest cry. And uh, he uh, will answer by and by. So I'm going to my seat when I tell you don't you give up. And uh, don't you give in. Do y'all hear me today? I say don't you give up. And uh, don't you give in. I'm going to my seat, but shake your neighbor's hand and tell them don't you give up. And don't you give in. Keep on praying and he won't uh, deny you. Do I have a witness in here? Uh, thank God uh, that somebody prayed for me had me on their mind, took out time and prayed for me. Won't you nudge your neighbor, say, I'm so glad she prayed for me. Maybe dead and gone, but I'm so glad she prayed for me that she would not let the Lord go until he blessed my soul. God bless you today. But why don't you shake your neighbor's hand and tell your neighbor, I won't be denied. I won't be denied. I may get ignored, but I won't be denied. I'm going to pray until he answers my prayer. I'm going to call on him until he comes to my rescue. I'm going to stick with it until I get the blessing that I need. And how many of y'all know he will answer your prayer?
one time. Yes, he will. Can I hear you say, yes, he will. Yes, he will. Jesus say, your daughter is healed. Great is your faith. The doors are open. Great faith. Great faith. Great faith. Great faith. The doors are open. If you're here today.